Till now we discussed about domain constraints, key constraints and entity integrity constraints. So in this video we are going to be discussing about referential integrity constraints, right? So uh, referential integrity constraint, what does it state is? It states that a tuple in one relation that refers to another relation must refer to an existing tuple in that relation, right? So this is what it says, right? I've written down the definition or the, what the constraint states, okay? Now let us understand with the help of these two tables that what this constraints actually mean. It states that if uh, a tuple in one relation refers to another relation, it should refer to an existing tuple in that relation, right? So let us talk about this relation. This is an employee relation, right? It stores details about an employee. What is it storing? Social security number, name, address, salary, D number and super SSN. Okay, so D number refers to the department number for which this employee works, right? Let us say this particular employee with social security number as 102 works for department number 5, right? So it is working for a department number 5. It means that it is working for this particular department so what this constraint states that if it is referring to some other relation so which relation is it referring it is referring to department relation how it states that the number of an employee for which it uh, a particular employee works this particular employee named as john works for department number five right so what is the corresponding tuple in this particular relation five Right, it is what this particular employee is working for department number five, which is research, um, who, uh, which is research department. Right, so this particular employee is working for research department. Right, so this particular tuple is referring to this particular relation. Right, uh, we already studied about department. Uh, sorry, employee works for department relation in where, while we were discussing ER model. Right, the same is represented using these two uh, relations. Right, in relational model. So. Employee, uh, this particular uh, tuple is referring to this particular relation. So what referential integrity constraint states that if a tuple is referring, if tuple in one relation is referring to another relation, it should refer to an existing tuple in that relation. That is, there should be an, there should be a corresponding tuple in this particular relation, right? What I mean to say is, there shouldn't be a case that if an employee is, let us say there shouldn't be a case like there, if I insert some employee, it is working for department number 32. This should not be the case because 32 department is not existing here. How can an employee work for a department that doesn't exist in the uh, office or that doesn't exist in a company, right? So it cannot work, right? So if a tuple is referring to some relation, it should uh, refer to an existing tuple in that relation. That is that tuple should exist here right so that is what referential integrity constraint states right so let us now see now this particular uh, tuple is referring to now this particular tuple is again referring to this particular relation and which tu uh, which tuple in this particular relation it is referring to again department number five right it, this is referring to department number four this is referring to department number one right so referential integrity constraint is satisfied right so so it is very logical, right? That is, in case if, if this is employee works for a, de a department, then employee needs to work for an existing department. It, no, it must not uh, create its own department and work under that, right? It is very logical, right? So how we can implement this in a relational model by specifying referential integrity constraint. So that is what referential integrity constraint states right now let us now first uh, define the concept of foreign key what is a foreign key and how what is its usage in referential integrity constraint okay so this particular uh, attribute d number is called as the foreign key of this particular relation right foreign key is this particular attribute right because this attribute is what uh, the values of this particular attributes are referring to this particular relation right so let us see what a foreign key is okay so a foreign key is a set of attributes right that satisfy certain conditions right a set of attributes in, in a particular relation that satisfy certain conditions what is the condition the first condition is that the, the domain of this set of attributes must be equal to the domain of the primary key of the relation it is referring to right in this particular department relation what is the primary key for this particular relation d number because for every uh, department for every entry in the department relation d number will be unique so d number is the 
सो डी नंबर इज द डी नंबर विल बी यूनिक सो डी नंबर इज द प्राइमरी की फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर रिलेशन राइट सो डी नंबर इज द प्राइमरी की दिस इज द प्राइमरी की फॉर दिस रिलेशन एंड द डोमेन ऑफ दिस फॉरन की the domain of the attributes in foreign key must match to the primary key of the refer uh, referencing relation right this relation is referring to this particular relation so the uh, so the domain of these set of attributes that we are trying to call as foreign key must be equal to the domain of this attribute uh, sorry the domain of the primary key of the referencing relation right so the first condition is this the second condition states that the same the uh, same that referential integrity constraint either this value this particular value occurs as the value of some tuple here right this should be present as value for some tuple here this particular tuple has the same value as this particular value either it should occur as this or either it can be null that is what the concept of foreign key says right so in case a, a set of attributes qualify to be qualified to uh, sorry or the uh, the set of attributes that satisfies these two conditions are said to be the foreign key for a particular relation you understood it i don't know if you understood it i should repeat again okay so what a referential integrity constraint states that if a relation is referring to some other relation then it should refer to an existing tuple in that relation right so this relation is referring to this particular relation why because an employee works for a department it can only work for a department that exists right logically it is that it is coming from there okay and how to specify this in a particular in the relational model we are saying that if an employee is working for a department it should work for an existing department and how is that possible it is possible if we are writing the value of d number for any tuple in this particular relation then that value must exist must already be present um uh, for some tuple t2 in this particular relation okay that value should already be present like we cannot write any um, any value that we want to write we cannot write 100 here 100 department number here if in case we are writing some value it should already be present here that is what referential integrity constraint states right and the set of attributes for which we are which are referring to this particular relation are called is are called as foreign key right so here it is just one attribute that is d number so d number is the foreign key for this particular relation because this is the attribute using which these two relations are connected okay so i hope now that you got the relation uh, uh, understood the meaning of foreign keys as well as referential integrity constraints right as we go far as we move further you will understand it more nicely or more precisely i should say okay so that is about a uh, referential integrity constraints okay and if these two conditions hold that is if the foreign key the conditions for a foreign key are satisfied then a referential integrity constraint is said to hold from r1 to r2 right that is if there is some foreign key in a particular relation that satisfies those two conditions that is the first condition is that the domain should match and second condition is that either there should be corresponding value for this particular either there should be a corresponding value in this particular relation or it can be null so if these two conditions satisfy then what we say is we say that a referential integrity constraint is said to hold from this relation to this particular relation right and in this particular definition employee is the uh, referencing relation and a department is the reference relation right this particular relation is referencing to this particular relation right so this is referencing relation and this is reference relation or this is a referring relation and this is referred relation okay so that is about uh, referential integrity constraints also i want to uh, also these constraints where they are arising from they are arising from relationships in er model okay uh we studied about attributes entities relationships in er model right so that relationships that we studied in er model result into referential integrity constraints in uh, relational model okay uh, in the further videos we we'll look at how to convert an er model or how to uh, convert from er model to relational model then it will be even more clear as to how we are converting uh, er model to uh this relational model okay then it will be even more clear how we are doing it how um how a relationship is represented in the form of uh, the referential integrity constraint right so it typically arises from relationships among the entities and how are entities represented here uh, using the 
रिलेशनल स्कीमास ओके ऑल्सो आई वॉन्ट टू से दैट अ फॉरन की इज नीड नॉट बी प्रेजेंट इन ओनली अ डिफरेंट सॉरी वॉट आई मीन टू से इज अ रिलेशन कैन रेफर टू इट सेल्फ और अ फॉरन की कैन रेफर टू द सेम रिलेशन राइट एग्जाम्पल दिस सुपर सिक्योरिटी सुपर सोशल सिक्योरिटी नंबर इज एन एट्रीब्यूट दैट गिवस द एसेसन ऑफ द एम्प्लॉई दैट इज सुपरवाइजिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर एम्प्लॉई राइट If let us talk about this particular tuple with SSN is equal to one zero two. So what four zero three means is that this is the social security number of the employee that is supervising this particular employee, right? Is it makes sense, right? It is giving the social security number of an employee that is supervising this particular employee, right? So. This is referring again to this particular relation only. Okay, so the foreign key can refer to the same relation. Okay, it can uh, refer to the its own relation itself, right? So this is referring to this. Okay, so this particular uh, attribute is referring to this. Uh, okay, if I say that, this, so then this is the foreign key for this particular relation, right? This is the foreign key. Why? Because it is refer now the um, what are the two conditions for foreign key? The first condition is that the attribute should be same. Sorry, the domain of the attribute should be same as the primary key of the refer uh, referred relation, right? So the uh, domain of this and this is same because both are referring to the social security number. So the domain is same. Second thing is that this value for all the tuples, the value of super SSN for all the tuples must already be present in this. So four hundred three is already. Four hundred three is already present. Two zero six is already present. Null. Either it can be present or either it can be null. Right. So it is null. It is two zero six. I hope you got the underlying meaning. The underlying meaning is that if you are writing the super secu uh, social security number of an employee, then that employee must already be present in the um, company. Right. You should not write if. If this is the entire information about all the employees in the company, if only five employees are present in the company, then I cannot uh, add one more employee. Let us say three to one and make the social security number of this is five two three because the employee with social security number five two three doesn't exist in the uh, company, right? So the uh, employee that we are assigning as the supervisor of any employee must already be present or must already be present in the company right we cannot uh, create an employee who is just a supervisor right he should first be an employee of the company then only he can be assigned as the uh, supervisor of a particular employee right i hope you got the meaning so a foreign key can refer to the same relation itself it need not be always present in another relation okay so it is represented using this form Okay, so this is the foreign key that is referring to this particular relation, and which attribute in this relation D number, and this this is a foreign key that is referring to its own relation, and which attribute SSN. So that is about the foreign key that refers to the same relation. Okay, so uh, that is about it, and I want to now I want to discuss about uh, this. Uh, So we discussed about domain constraints, key constraints, entity integrity, and referential integrity constraints, right? Till now, so these are schema-based constraints, as we already saw in the previous videos that um, there were three types of constraints, right? Implicit and schema-based and semantic integrity constraints. So all these are form uh, part of uh, this. Uh, schema based constraint right so the semantic based constraints are the constraints that cannot be directly expressed in the schemas right what are uh, semantic constraints semantic or application based constraints just uh, revise what you studied in the previous videos semantic integrity constraints or the application based constraints are the constraints that we cannot directly express in the schemas of the data model and they have to be enforced and specified within the application programs right that are the semantic integrity constraints right so the example of semantic integrity constraint is that uh, the salary of um, supervisor cannot be uh, sorry the salary of an employee cannot be greater than the salary of its supervisor this is a semantic integrity constraint right why because it cannot you cannot directly specify while defining um the schema that you know the salary of an employee cannot be greater than the salary of its supervisor so that is what a semantic integrity constraint is or let us say another example includes 
um, the number of hours an employee can work per, on all projects per week is 56. So this constraint cannot also be directly enforced in the schema of the data model. While specifying the schema of the data model, this constraint cannot be represented, right? So it is called a semantic integrity constraint. So in order to represent these constraints, what we use, we use constraint specification language or we can use the applic or we can specify it under the application programs that update the database, right? So how we are defining it and how will we define the data uh, um, schema of the database and how we are going to do this we are going to learn in the further videos right when we learn about how to write in sql and how to specify it right then we learn about how to define the database schema and all that stuff okay so currently just understand that those constraints semantic integrity constraints cannot be directly expressed right so they have to be either um, be a uh, specified using a, a separate language called constraint specification language or within the application program that update the database okay so this type of constraints that we studied till now are called as state constraints right they can be called as state constraints because uh, they just define the constraints that a valid state of the database needs to satisfy right so they can be called as state constraints okay so the next uh, thing we are going to be discussing about is operations on database right operations on database okay so what kind of operations we can do on database either we can you know put something on database right like we can add something into database or get something from database right so operations in database can be classified into two categories the first one is the um, or the first one it can be called as retrieval and second one is can be called as updation right retrieval means we are getting some information out of the database and updation means we are updating something in the database right so these are the two basic operations that we do in the database the so the first let us talk about updations first okay so the operations can be updations or retrievals okay so these are the two operations that we can do perform on database. So let us now talk about updates, updations. Okay. So there are three basic operations that comes under updations. The first is insert. Next is delete. And next is uh, modify. Okay. So these three operations, or these are the three basic operations that are performed under updations right insert delete or modify insert means inserting a new tuple or more uh, inserting one or more tuples in the database delete means deletion deletion of one or more tuples from the database and modification means altering the value of certain attributes of certain tuples right that is modification so whenever we perform these operations on database what happens is they can lead to violation of some of the constraints that we just discussed okay they can lead to violation of uh, these constraints domain constraints key constraints entity integrity referential integrity so these operations can lead to violation of these constraints okay so we have to make sure that these constraints should not be violated right so we will see how we can preserve it or how we can uh, just prevent uh, these violations from occurring right we have to see that how, what we can do from our side to prevent this right so let us now first talk about the insert operation okay so insert operation uh, is used to insert some tuples in the relation uh, relation okay so let us now talk uh, now talk about what kind of constraint violation can insertion lead to so insertion can lead to violation of any of the four constraints right it can lead to violation of entity integrity referential integrity domain constraints key constraints okay how let us say let us say how it, let us look at how it leads to violation of each constraint domain constraint key constraint referential integrity and entity integrity okay let us first revise what are these kinds of constraints what what was domain constraint saying domain constraint says that the value of uh, each attribute within each tuple must be an atomic value and that should belong to the domain right that is every value that you insert 
in this particle in a, any relation must be an atomic value and it should belong to the domain. So domain constraint can be violated like this. Let us say the domain of name is a set of Okay, so uh, let us say the domain for this particular attribute name is the set of all strings, right? So we can only specify strings uh, or the value of this particular attribute can only be from the set of strings. But let us say I want to insert a number here. I'm trying to insert a tuple in this particular relation that has the value for name attribute as 321. Is domain constraint violated? Definitely. Why? Because domain constraint states that the value needs to belong to the domain and it isn't belonging to the domain. So the domain constraint is violated. Right. Now let us talk about how key constraint is violated. What, what does key constraint states that no two tuples in any state of the relation can have same value for the key attributes. Right. So in case I'm trying to, so what is it saying? Key constraint is saying that the value of the key attributes need not, cannot be repeated. Right. In case there is some value for any particular tuple, then that value cannot be repeated. Right. So let us say I want to insert a tuple. I want to insert a tuple with the uh, value of SSN as 102. Is it acceptable? Is it following the key constraint? No, it isn't. Because the value of SSN is uh, as 102 is already present for some other tuple T, T1. It cannot be present for some other tuple T2, right? Two tuples in any state of the relation cannot have same value for the key attributes, right? So 102, since it is already present for some tuple, it cannot be present for another tuple. The value cannot be repeated, right? So this violates the key constraint, right? Now let us see how referential integrity constraint is violated. We just saw, right? Let us say I want to insert a tuple for which the value of D number is 40. Is it following the referential integrity constraint? No, it is not following because the value of D number as 40 is not acceptable because 40 is not present as the value of some tuple in this particular relation called department, right? Since it is not present here, it cannot be accepted here. So that leads to violation of referential integrity constraint. Now let us see how it leads to violation of entity integrity. What entity integrity constraint states that? Entity integrity constraint states that no primary key value can be null. So in case I want to insert a tuple in which the value of SSN is null, that entity integrity constraint is violated. Right? So all the four constraints can be violated in case we are talking about insertion or we are doing insertion. Right? Any of the four constraints can be violated. So how to deal with it? The first option and the most popular op option when it comes to insertion is to reject the insertion, right? Do not insert the tuple, right? So that is the first option and this is the default option. Uh, that is uh, the DBMS won't allow you to insert that, that particular tuple if it leads to violation of any of the constraints, right? Or uh, the second option could be the DBMS could just tell the user as to why is it uh, it isn't allowing the user to insert uh, a particular tuple. That is, it can say that you are inserting the value of a primary key as null, which is not acceptable. You should specify some valid value. Or when we are uh, not uh, following the domain constraint, it can say that the value doesn't belong to the domain. So you need to provide a valid value that belongs to the domain, right? So that can be the uh, case also. And in case of referential integrity constraint, it can if you are trying to insert 40 then it will say that you cannot insert it if you want to insert it first insert uh, the corresponding tuple in the referencing relation that is the department relation first insert this and then insert this right so that can be one possible case but that is not usually followed what is usually done is and the easiest possible option is to reject the deletion right uh, sorry, reject the insertion. So that is how we deal with insert operations in case they lead to violation of constraints, right? So that is uh, about uh, insertion operation. Uh, for deletion and modification, we'll see in the next video what are the options we are uh, we are going to adopt in order when deletion and modification leads to violation of constraints okay and with that this particular chapter that is uh, the fifth chapter of Navarte fifth edition will be over after that we'll uh, learn how to convert from ER to relational model and after that maybe we can move on to normalization okay so that will be the flow I hope you understood it if you do then 
If you like this video, then please don't forget to press the like button. Subscribe to my channel so that you uh, never, uh, so that, uh, okay. <laughs> so subscribe to my channel and um, press the notification bell so that you get notified every time I put up a new video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.